Hey guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. How are you going and how did you go with Halloween? Because today I'm going to talk about life lessons. Life lessons by Linda, okay? My perspective of what happened to me when I died back in 2001. So let's go there with what happened yesterday, which was Halloween, the 30th of October, 2022, here in Brisbane, Australia. So I went, took my daughter to school, and through the day I thought, damn, I've got to go to the shop and buy candy, just in case we get any treat or tr trick or treaters. So as I'm driving up to the shops, I was thinking, damn, you know, I haven't put up Halloween decorations this year. I've got nothing to wear because I've donated all my costumes over to the charity shops, which I did <laughs> about four months ago. I thought, damn, it's going to be a really horrible Halloween. I hope that people come to the door and want candy so I got a few bags of candy brought them home put them in a big bowl my daughter came home from school and to be honest I've got a neighbor who's not the best nicest neighbor on the planet they scream a lot and they came down with their little child who's about two years old the little kid was dressed up in a little onesie with little ears on. And I just thought, wow, this kid, who am I to judge what that kid's going through? How do I turn to those parents and say, you're nasty. I'm not giving you any of my chocolate. I wasn't going to do that. So I went inside. I said, Tashi, get out the chocolates. We've got a, hell a trick or treater. So they came to the door and they took a lot of chocolate, which I was happy to give them. Then we're sitting inside, my daughter and I, and we're sitting there and I said, Tashi, you know what? How about we make some chocolate, some little presents, and we'll take them down the road to Maxwell and Raymond. Maxwell and Raymond are probably 60 to 70 year old gentlemen with high intellectual disabilities. One of them is only like a five-year-old child. So I like talking to them as I could do my rounds down the street as I walk around. And I also have seen them at the shops and I'll stop and give them a hug in the shopping centre. So what we did is I got some Christmas wrap. And you know how Christmas wrap comes in the long tubes, right? So I got the tube of one of my Christmas wraps. And I halved it, and <laughs> I thought that I had them both the same, but one was a bit longer than the other, so I cut some off. So the, the tubes are about that long. And what I did is I stuffed them in with those little chocolates, you know, those little bite-sized Mars bars, Snickers, Cherry Ripes, all those type, Milky Ways and all those type of things. So I put them down inside the tube. So there was about 15 in each of them. And what I did is I wrapped them up in orange paper that I had here. Didn't even know I had it. It's orange. Hello, Halloween. So we wrapped them up, <laughs> rolled them up into the paper, you know, make them up, and folded over the edge with sticky tape. I said to Tashi, let's go down to the boys. You know, Tashi helped me do this. Let's go take them down to the boys. So we go down the street, we go through their front gate. <laughs> go up to the front door. Knock, 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 knock. And the carer opened the door and he says, oh, no, 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 we don't do Halloween. He was expecting, ha, 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 this is about lessons, right? He was expecting that I was there asking for chocolate. So I held out the two, well, Tashi had one and I had one. We held out the tubes that we had with the chocolates. And I said, no, 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 honey. We're not here to ask for trick or treat. We're here to give the boys trick-or-treats. And the carer, do not compute, do not compute. It was like he was about to start sparking out of his head. He said, what, what, what? I said, no, 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 we're here to give the boys, the two men, some trick-or-treats because they can't go out trick-or-treating. And then he it tweaked and he had this total flip of what society and community condition us to believe about Halloween so the two boys came to the door 
and one's quite scary. He looks like Frankenstein without the costume. <laughs> and he's holding a knife and fork. <laughs> Oh, my God. He'd been eating his dinner and he had gravy all coming down his face and he had the gravy all over the knife and fork and he's holding it here right in my face and he's like, he brought me chocolate. And I was thinking, don't stab me with the knife and fork, please. This is Halloween. What the best costume and you don't even have a costume. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so we gave him a hug. We got a little chat with the carer, blah, blah, blah. Came home. So then some more no trick or treat escape. Three kids this time from around the back. I live in a very colourful street. Um, they do illegal activity, that's all I'm gonna say. But did I say no, sorry, I'm not going to I'm not gonna ju- I'm gonna judge you and say no, you don't deserve chocolate. So I opened up the bag because I had this big bowl with all these Mars bars, cherry ripes, Milky Ways and Snickers and all these other things inside. And the kids are like <laughs> Candy, candy, mine, mine, mine. <laughs> like in that Mimo movie. Mine? Anyway, so the kids go off, Mom, look what we got, look what we got. I felt so good. I felt so good. So I'm lying here. I came inside and I came in. I'm lying there in front of the TV last night. And my daughter comes up to me and, you know, just have a little chat. And I said, darling, why do you think I'm so happy? And she said, this is my 16-year-old daughter. She said to me, Mum, I'll tell you why you feel good. Because those kids don't deserve to feel like we hate them. Pardon me. And I said, elaborate, daughter. (laughs) Elaborate. She said, Mum, everybody deserves to feel special. That was my 16-year-old last night. Everybody deserves to feel special. So when we look at our life lessons, guys, you know, I'm not gloating here at all. But how do we learn our life lessons unless somebody else explains what they do and then we think inside our head, oh, my God, I want to do this better. I want to make this bigger. I want to do this grander. And, oh, I can do that and I can do that because that's how we build that vibration of kindness generosity and love like I showed on those two boys last night okay so how do we learn our lessons unless somebody else points it out to us you know you look at a teacher at school and the teacher will show you the lessons but then it's how we incorporate those lessons in our own perspective and make those our own reality that we then to show and give to others as well as ourselves okay so Oh my God. So I've made some notes last night. One of them was, I'm not gloating. I'm teaching Rose to to love each other. Now Christmas is about eight weeks away. And if you live in the US, you've got Thanksgiving coming up in about four weeks. So this is a great time now to sit there and think to yourself, am I the sort of person who expects to go door to door and expects things from other people who I don't even know? Or am I the type of person who makes my own gifts and gives them to other people? You know, I always say Halloween brings out the spite and the this, um, conceitedness and it also brings out the absolute greed in others because they dress up in their costumes they deserve trick-or-treats they're walking around expecting I'm going to knock on that old guy's door I don't even know him from a bar of soap but I'm going to knock on his door tonight and he will give me chocolate that's the philosophy a lot of people have at, at Halloween correct you knock on someone's door you don't know the neighbors you don't know the people in the next town where you go or trick or treat. <laughs> okay, so how about instead of walking around expecting others to give you something, how about you make your own little presents and when you knock on someone's door, like I did last night with Maxwell and Raymond, how about you knock on their door and say, trick or treat, here's a present for you. <gasps> oh! I'll tell you something, last night I didn't go to sleep until after one o'clock because I was lying in bed thinking, thank you so much 
for giving me what I deserve. I deserve to feel love. I deserve to give love. I deserve to share it to others so they can create it and spread this out <laughs> throughout the universe. Oh, so what are you going to do for Thanksgiving? What are you going to do for Christmas Day? You know, there is nothing wrong with making up a little couple of little boxes. Have, have you looked at Google how to make a little box out of a piece of paper? You, you fold it and then you fold it again. You make a little box out of a piece of paper. So one piece of paper, what, two cents? And all you can do, if you if you haven't got anything to put in it, you just write notes on it, on each side of the, the cube. I hope you're having a special day today. Please know you're appreciated. How about you say something like, you are loved from afar. And they get this box in their letterbox on Christmas Day and they look at it thinking, who gave me that? Could it be that? Could it be who? Uh -uh. But it, ultimately, they will never know who it's from because these un, unconditional, unrecognized kindness acts are what make the world so important. I was sitting here last night lying in bed because I didn't go to sleep till one o'clock because I was thinking about today's video because it's so good. And I was thinking, you know what I'm going to do for Christmas? I'm going to make all these little boxes out of out of um, pieces of paper. It's really easy. It's on Google how to make some box out of a piece of paper, right? I'm going to make all these little boxes and put them in everyone's little box down up and down the street. And on, on each side of the cube, just write notes. I hope that you feel special. I hope you're having a great day. You are loved from afar. You are valuable. You are important. You are special. Wow. Can you imagine the perspective? Waking up on Christmas Day, walking out to your letterbox thinking, oh, nobody loves me. It's a shit hell day today. Oh, God, I hate Christmas. I'm suicidal because a lot of people are at Christmas. You know, it's the worst time of year for depression and anxiety because we have so many expectations and we have so many grudges. Oh, I don't want to see that person. Oh, I don't want to go over their house. Get that out of your head because that's your issue. You accept that person for who they are because ultimately it's them that has to heal that issue, not you. You just have to heal your own issues. So get that out of your head. You say, I'm, I'm happy to go and see that person today. You know, I've got people in my circle I don't want to see. You know, but I go and see them anyway and I'll give them the biggest hug and I'll say, I love you. Because whatever issue they have is their issue to bear and to heal. So Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, birthday, Valentine's Day. We always have some sort of celebration in life, right? Because of societal conditioning to make us feel good. Why don't we make ourselves feel good by being good to others? Who says we must walk door to door and ask for something? Why can't we go door to door and give something else to them? You look at that perspective. How would you feel waking up, you go out to your door, you're all upset, you're in your nighty, you walk out to your letterbox and there's a little box with all these little messages on it. You're looking up and down the street thinking, who the heck put that in my letterbox? Have I got a stalker? Have I got a secret admirer? <gasps> wow. And you go back inside and you're actually walking a foot above yourself. <gasps> wow, I'm going off the screen. Because I feel so light. I feel so stress-free now. Someone likes me. Who is it? But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because these little acts of kindness, just minuscule touches or glimpses of love from one to another, creates this ripple effect within us where that person was having a bad day they might now get in their car go down to the park and they'll see a kid playing with the dog that they just got a new puppy for Christmas and they'll say oh wow what a cute dog what did you call it 
and they might have a great day because of one simple act of kindness where instead of receiving shit on Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day or Thanksgiving, whatever other day you want to call it, we decided to flip that coin and give something to someone else. And it all came down, you know, to my 16-year-old last night when I said to her, why do you think I gave chocolates to those screaming a-holes up the, up the, where they live? My daughter looked at me and she said, Mum, everybody deserves to feel special. Hope you're all having a great day. Please share this video with whoever you think needs to hear this lesson. And because it is Halloween, trick or treat, my gift jar is below. Let's see the magic of Halloween if it works this year for all of us. Have a great one, guys. Bye.